Good morning and welcome to St. Stephen's Episcopal Church on this Sunday, December 6th, the second Sunday of Advent. We're so glad that you could join us for worship this morning. You can find the link for our bulletin in the description of this video, and we hope that you will pray alongside with us. And now, let us begin our time together in worship with just a moment of holy silence to recall the presence of Christ who is in our midst. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today we light the first and second candles of the Advent wreath. Each candle has a meaning. The first candle is hope. The second candle is peace. From Colossians chapter 3, verse 15. Let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body, you were called to peace. Let's say together, Almighty God, you, you offer, offer rest for our hearts and peace for our, our souls. souls. Give, Give us grace to seek peace in our lives, peace in this community, and, and peace in, in the world. world. Through, Through Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ the, the Prince, Prince of Peace. peace. Amen. Amen. Our reading today from the Old Testament is from the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her, for that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. 
a voice cries out. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers. The flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers. The flower fades. But the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 85, verses 1 to 2 and 8 through 13. We will read it responsively at the asterisk. You have been gracious to your land, O Lord. You have, you have restored, restored the, the good, good fortune, fortune of Jacob. Jacob. You have forgiven the iniquity of your people and, and blotted, blotted out all their sins. sins. I will listen to what the Lord God is saying. For, for he, he is speaking, speaking peace to his faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to him. Truly his salvation is very near to those who fear him. That, that his glory may dwell in our land. land. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring up from the earth. And righteousness shall look down from heaven. The Lord will indeed grant prosperity. And our land will yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him. And peace shall be a pathway for his feet. The reading from the New Testament is from the second book of Peter, chapter 3, verses 8 through 15a. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a loud noise, and the elements will be dissolved with fire, and the earth and everything that is done on it will be disclosed. Since all these things are being dissolved in this way, what sort of persons ought you to be leading lives of holiness and godliness? waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set ablaze and dissolved, and the elements will melt with fire. But in accordance with his promise, we wait for new heavens and a new earth, where righteousness is at home. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. My children know that if they want a story read to them, they can go to either one of their parents. And most of the time, we are more than happy to read our children a story, even if we've read that particular Curious George or Mr. Men book a thousand times. If it settles them down and there's some quiet in the house, even if it's only for the time we're actually reading it, I'm happy to read my kids a story. And yeah, there's also that whole bonding with your children thing. But my children also know that if they want a story told to them, they go to their mom. Because apparently, I am not a very good storyteller. I've heard, Dad, that's not how the story goes, or Dad, you left out the part about more times than I care to think about. Now, I always get the main gist of the story correct, but my children, like I think most children, can be really quick to point out when I've left out an important detail or, or changed the story in the slightest. So they're quick to let me know that I'm not the storyteller in the house. And I think this morning, I might be able to say the same about Isaiah and Mark. They're not really the best storytellers in the Bible. Now, last week, from the prophet Isaiah, we heard all about the sorrow the lamentation, the sadness, the despair of the people of Israel as they cried out for God to come down and restore them as a people. Many Israelites had been banished from their homeland and they're in exile in Babylon. So a return to their homeland is something that the Jewish people have been waiting for, they've been longing for, that they've been praying for for years. But it seems unlikely to happen. Jerusalem, their capital, that once mighty city, has been destroyed. And the God who dwelled there in the temple is nowhere to be found. The kings who are descended from the mighty David no longer sit on the throne. So life, as the people of Israel knew it, it was, it was over. So the people are crying out, where are you, God? Where's this salvation that you promised us? Why why do you continue to hide from us, God? We want things to go back the way they used to, used to be. We want what we know, what brings us comfort. We want to go back to normal, God. And then all of a sudden, in this morning's reading, we get a radical shift from the prophet. In the midst of all this despair, Isaiah changes up the story. It goes from lamentation to, to almost rejoicing. It's like we've missed something, some, some crucial part of the story. And we quickly jump to hope. Comfort. Comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem. Cry to her 
that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she's received from the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for your God. Every valley will be lifted up, every mountain and hill will be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. It's not just a suggestion from God on what Isaiah should say to the people of Israel. It is, as one author wrote, it's a word of encouragement. It's a word of empowerment. You are still my people, God says. I have not forgotten you. I have not abandoned you. I am still with you in the midst of your despair. I am here. And with that detail in the story, a detail that the Israelites and I think people often forget in the midst of difficult times because God is always with us, the prophet is is really delivering some good news here. News that we too may be longing to hear, that a change is coming. God is coming. So prepare the way, prepare yourselves. And that's right where Mark starts his gospel. And it's a really abrupt beginning. It's, it's a beginning that my children might shout out, that's, that's not supposed to be the beginning, Mark. This is the story of Jesus, not John. You've left out all the good parts. Where's Elizabeth carrying John or, or Mary giving birth to Jesus? Where's, where's Joseph? Where's the shepherds? Where's the angels? Where's the star for crying out loud, Mark? Because Mark leaves all that out. There's no buildup at all. It seems Christ's birth really isn't all that important to Mark. What's far more important to him is is Jesus' ministry, his death, his resurrection. So Mark begins his gospel right away with words from Isaiah. Though he does forget the little detail that he's also using the prophet Malachi's words too. And he launches right into the preaching, not of Jesus, but of John. And even John's story isn't as fully developed in Mark's gospel as it is in Matthew and Luke's. Because you see, Mark gets right to the point. Mark loves to do that. He uses the word immediately throughout his gospel. Everything happens really, really fast in Mark's gospel. With his description of the baptizer, Mark wants us to see John is both a herald of what's to come and what is coming, but also an outsider. He wants us to see John as the new Elijah, the one who's going to announce the coming of the Messiah. And we meet that prophet, John, not in the midst of the big crowded city where you think the storyteller would want to put him, where his message might reach the most people, but instead we meet John out in the wilderness. Now the wilderness of Scripture isn't a lovely trail in the woods with with beautiful scenes surrounding you. That's the scene of a fairy tale. The wilderness of, of the Bible is a place of struggle. It's a bleak place. It's desolate, lonely, It's a place where water is scarce, where the weather can change on a dime. That place isn't a place where one willingly goes. It's a place where you find yourself because something has gone terribly wrong. But that's where Mark starts his story because that's where the story has to start. The way Mark begins can feel kind of abrupt, startling, maybe even off-putting. But maybe it's the kind of story that makes sense for us in this particular Advent season. As one theologian recently wrote, as we close out this difficult and in its own way horrendous year of 2020, maybe we need less convincing than in other years that we need to face this world's brokenness head on. The fallenness of this world, our mutual enmeshment and sin, our human ability to wound one another, to divide 
over things. All of this and more has been on grim display throughout this year. So Mark is right. We must begin in the wilderness with John, with repentance. Because if we can't start there with repentance, we may not find any motivation to greet the Savior at all. Because Mark knows that Jesus comes to liberate everything, everything from the bondage of sin and death. So forgiveness is that main detail of their stories that Isaiah and Mark make abundantly clear to us. They want to make sure that we understand this is all about forgiveness. Mark tells us that huge numbers come to hear John the Baptist's message all about repentance. And maybe what makes his message so appealing to the crowd is that they know forgiveness is a part of repentance. Forgiveness is what brings hope. It's what brings comfort to the people of God. When they return from exile, whether it's from Babylon or from whatever hardship we suffer, or even from whatever hardship we imagine may be keeping us from separate from God. Only God's grace and forgiveness allows there to be future and new beginnings. When, when we can, excuse me, when we can see repentance as a part of forgiveness, that's a new start. It's a new advent. That's when we see how forgiveness fosters a life of peace. The stories Mark and Isaiah tell this morning may not be perfect in their construction, but they are the perfect and much needed reminder that God offers us forgiveness time and time again. It's quiet. It comes to us in the busyness of life. It comes to us when we feel like we have lost control. It reminds us that God is still with us always breaking through in new and unexpected ways. And that's the good news in this Advent season, that we are preparing the way for Emmanuel, for God with us. Amen. Let us stand and profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, True God for true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life for the world to come. Amen. Please kneel as you are able for the prayers of the people. Gracious God, Through your messengers, the prophets, you have called your people to prepare the way of the Lord, 
and to welcome the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Speak tenderly to your people, that we may wait for and hasten the coming day, saying, Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness, Righteousness and peace have, have kissed, kissed each, each other. other. Indwelling God, you have baptized your church with the Holy Spirit. Inspire us to lead lives of holiness and godliness as we prepare for new heavens and a new earth, that as Christ comes, he finds us to be a people of peace and justice. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness, Righteousness and peace have kissed, kissed each other. other. Holy and mighty God, open the ears and eyes of the leaders of all the nations, that they may listen to what the Lord God is saying. For you are speaking peace to your faithful people and to those who turn their hearts to you. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness, Righteousness and, and peace have, have kissed, kissed each other. other. Compassionate God, look upon the needs of all humanity. Feed your flock like a shepherd. Gather the lambs in your arms and carry them in your bosom, gently leading the mother sheep that all may know the comfort of your strength. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness, Righteousness and peace have kissed, kissed each other. Ever-present God, lift up your voice with peril to herald good tidings to the people of this community, to cast out all fear as we listen for the happy cry of your coming salvation. Mercy and truth have met together. Righteousness, Righteousness and, and peace have, have kissed, kissed each other. Glorious God, come with might in your divine recompense to reveal your glory to all who look to you in hope, as we pray especially for Patricia Robinson, Liana Mayer, Jeannie Santofani Jensen, Tony Hoffer, Judy Shackleton, Wayne Lockard and the Lockard family, David Kerpark, Leo Landry, Matthew, Phil Hoagie, Joan Langenfeld, Eloise Hendrickson, Mary and Scott Vining, Loretta March, Leonard Tabor, May, Samuel, Christy, Alexandra, Jenny, Kelly Weaver, Kelsey, Boyd, Mel Sappington, Pat Cooper, Fran Sullivan, Mark, Alan, Jordan, Noah, and those we name with our lips or in our hearts. For those who have been deployed and put in harm's way to defend our country, and for all those who work for the safety of our communities and the security of our country. Accept our glad tidings for those who offer you their gracious thanksgivings, especially for those in the fellowship of the faith in our diocese, St. James Church, Lafayette Square, Church of the Redeemer, Baltimore, and St. John's in the Village, Baltimore. And in our Anglican cycle of prayer, our companion diocese of Puerto Rico, and the Reformed Episcopal Church of Spain. Bring into your everlasting reign those who have died. Mercy and trust have met together. Righteousness, Righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Look upon your creation and comfort your people, O Holy One. Let every valley be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. Let the uneven ground become level and the rough places a plain. That all people may see the revelation of the glory of God and the power of the Holy Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able. May the peace of Christ be always with you and also with you. God's peace to all who are watching on our live stream this morning. We're so glad that you're able to join us. Please be seated. Just a few brief announcements this morning. Uh, the first one is the diocese has allowed for small groups to gather for worship 
outside only during Advent. So starting this Sunday and for every Sunday in Advent, uh, we'll be gathering at the benches in front of Woodward Hall at 5.30 for Compline around an Advent fire pit. Uh, socially, social distancing and masks will be required and the, the maximum number of people we can have this evening is 25. Um, so please sign up to join us. There are still a few uh, places available. The link for that sign up can be found in this description of the video. It can also be found on the homepage of our website. And as I said, we still have a few spots this evening. If you'd like to join us, please bring your masks and your coats because it's gonna be chilly this evening, but we'd love to have you join us. We also, uh, this afternoon at 3 p.m., uh, we invite you to uh, view a recording of our 2019 community sing-along of Handel's Messiah. Obviously, we couldn't gather together this year and have the event in person, but we did want to mark the occasion because this beautiful music, which we had a, a chamber orchestra for, we had vocal soloists, uh, we had our, our audience sing along. It's become an, an annual holiday tradition for many people, so we wanted to keep it going. So at 3 p.m. on our Facebook page or also on our YouTube page, uh, you may, may view that recording. We also invite you to, to send a no donation to the Crofton Christian Caring Council, and you can do that uh, through our PayPal link on our homepage of our website. So please, please join us uh, to view that wonderful tradition, and we hope that you will join us next year in 2021, where hopefully we can gather all together and sing the beautiful music of Handel to God's praise. Uh, we are still waiting to hear from the county about how St. Stephen's may be able to help with holiday sharing. So please keep an uh, eye out on your email boxes, email inboxes, or our Facebook page uh, as to ways we might be able to help our holiday sharing families this year. Uh, evening prayer continues every Monday through Friday on our Facebook page at 7 p.m. So we invite you to join us for that. We also had our Advent study happening Wednesday evenings at seven. Uh, it really is a great uh, series. You can join us even if you haven't had a chance to read the book. There's a video that will, will bring you up to speed if you haven't yet read. So, so please consider joining us at 7 p.m. on Wednesday evenings throughout Lent for that series. And finally, we have the opportunity to bring communion to your homes. On the fourth Sunday of Advent, we're gonna be having what we're calling communion to go. If you'd like to share communion with us on that Sunday, you can order communion to go kits from St. Stephen's. Uh, we'll have the prepackaged kits of bread and wine uh, in a bag with your family's name on it. And you can drive by on Saturday, December 19th, and you can pick up your kits. And when you worship with us on Sunday morning, the next day on the 20th, you can have communion right alongside us here worshiping at church. So I invite you to sign up for that. You can find the link for that also in the description of this video. You can find the sign up uh, on our website. Just make sure you put in under quantity how many communion uh, kits you need to go home with you. And you can drive by and pick them up on Saturday the 19th at 11. Uh, it's a great way to have com Christmas communion a little bit early this year and when we can't all gather together as we would like to do on Christmas Eve. Um, be on the lookout for our Christmas Eve services and Christmas Day services both on our Facebook page and on our YouTube channel. Uh, times when those will come out will be soon. We'll also be doing lessons and carols on the 27th as well. So please join us for all those uh, holiday services this year. And with that, Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
Our service continues with Eucharistic Prayer B, which may be found on page 367 in the Book of Common Prayer. It can also be found in the bulletin of this service. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life. That when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we men, without shame or fear, rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son, for in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of men. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, blessed Stephen, blessed John the Baptist, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. prayer for spiritual communion for those who cannot be with us in person this morning. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus. Let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me, in this life and in the life to come. Amen. And let us say our post-communion prayer together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. May the sun of righteousness shine upon you and scatter the darkness from before your path. And may the blessings of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Thank you all for joining us this morning for our Sunday morning worship. Thank you to Becky for being our reader and for David for being our, our soloist this morning and, and Vicki for being our Altar Guild member. Uh, and thank you to you all for everything that you do for our parish, from sending in your pledges and donations um, to offering to help in whatever way you can during these difficult times. I truly do appreciate it, and this parish could not function without you all. So thank you for all that you do for your parish. And with that, let us go into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia.